Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. So I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys today about discernment and listening to your gut instinct and not allowing people to shame you because you listen to that gut instinct because your discernment, your gut instinct, your spiritual discernment, whatever you want to call it, can literally save your life. So let me go ahead and tell you about some things that went down with me three weeks ago. So as some of you guys know, I went out to L.A. for BET Weekend. And what was so funny is that even before I went out to L.A., I had did a video about Airbnbs. It was a video I did about a woman who Airbnb'd her home, and the lady ended up squatting in her home and refusing to leave. And so as you guys know, I have used Airbnb for years. I'm talking about since like 2014. And I haven't really had any issues with it, you know what I'm saying? So this is not my first rodeo with Airbnb. I literally chose Airbnb over even staying at hotels just because I liked them. It was more convenient. It was more space, things like that. So this particular time, um, three weeks ago, I chose an Airbnb in Los Angeles. And what a lot of people don't know is that with Airbnb, They're just showing you the pictures. You don't know the address. You don't know the location. You don't get all the details until after you've booked and paid your money. So for y'all who don't understand that, this is why I ended up in this situation. Not because I knowingly chose that location, that address. No, you're literally just going off of the pictures and then you get all the details after the fact. So I need y'all to keep that in mind. So what ended up happening is I had saw a nice Airbnb condo. And I said, okay, cool. You know, this looks decent. It's a one bedroom. It looks newer, you know. So I said, well, I'll choose this one. So I ended up paying $1,300 for five days. So for, so matter of fact, the Airbnb was more than a hotel. Okay. So I choose it. Um, LA is having a lot of issues with the homeless population down there. Anybody who's from L.A., anybody who's lived in L.A., y'all understand where I'm coming from. I lived in L.A. for close to four years. There'd be times where I'd have auditions in downtown L.A., and I'm literally getting chased by homeless people. Schizophrenics, you know what I'm saying? So I get there, and it's literally a maze of instructions. There's nowhere for me to park in her building. Usually, like, let's say I do an Airbnb in Atlanta, you get that person's parking space. They go on about their business, you get their parking space, you pull in, the lock is on the door inside a secure building. You are in the unit, you're you're in the building, and then you're putting the code in to get into the unit. Well, this girl was telling me that, oh, there's no parking at the apartment. I said, well, where do you expect me to park? I have a bunch of luggage with me. I have my media case. What do you want me to do? Oh, well, there's public parking across the street, and then you got to walk down a ways to the apartment. So that right there was strike number two for me. So I finally pull up into the park, into the public parking spot and I get there and I'm like, okay, where am I going now? And she's literally telling me in the instructions, oh, there's a lock box where the lock is attached to the fence and it's like the fifth lock down or some mess and I can just unlock it. So I'm like, I've never in my life in using Airbnb ever experienced this. So now I'm going And I get there, there's literally, no lie, 20 locks on this disgusting, dirty ground. I have on my suitcase with me because the thing is, in L.A., there's been a lot of carjackings. So you literally cannot leave anything in your car. So I have my two suitcases, I have my media bag, and my backpack. And I'm sitting here like, this is insane. So now I'm trying to count to the fifth lock. I'm trying to fumble with it, and it's so hard to even, it's not touch screen. It's not like a touch pad. You have to, like, you know, scroll the lock up and down. Like, you have to, like, you know, move the numbers up and down. And the numbers are stuck. You can tell this shit has been out here for months in the elements. And so now I'm getting a funny feeling. 
I'm starting to, because mind you, I'm on literally on the ground on my knees trying to fumble with this, and I have bags around me. I start getting this funny feeling, and something says, TT, look up. And I look up, and I stop, and I'm noticing that there's men around me, and they're not walking. You know what I'm saying? Because before I was hearing feet walking by, and it's like all of a sudden I'm not really hearing any movement, and I'm looking up, and I'm seeing people watching me. At that point, something in my spirit said, get your shit and get the hell up out of here now. Okay? But before I did that, I made sure to take pictures and videos because I'm like, this is ridiculous. I had to let Airbnb know what's going on. So now I get up. I said, I'm not doing this. I grab all my stuff. I walk right back to the car, put everything in the car, and I sit in the parking lot. And I'm just, I'm really upset at this point. Because I'm like, I have nowhere to stay. I have all my stuff. I need to find a hotel. But most importantly, I need to let Airbnb know what's going on. So I end up hitting them up. I'm telling them I don't feel safe. This is what's up. I'm contacting the girl, and she's trying to argue with me and say, oh, we do this all the time. It's the fifth one. You just don't know which one. I said, no. There's literally men out here watching me tinker with a lock. I'm not doing this. And then I still have to walk down the street to your Airbnb. You have me messed up. I want a full refund. I'm not staying here. I don't feel safe. And so, you know, I end up getting a nice hotel near LAX, right? So I end up just going to the hotel, checking in. You know, I felt better. And I posted everything on, you know, social media to let people know what I was going through. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, what I posted on Twitter and what I posted on Instagram. So this was the Airbnb listing I took screenshots of. Because like I said, you don't get all of this information until you pay the money. And her wording was just very strange to me that she kept saying, this is a friendly reminder. Airbnb has struggled in Los Angeles. Even her writing has struggled. And she's saying, so for our benefit, please don't mention anyone about Airbnb. So that was a red flag to me. Then she said it again later on in the description. Again, don't mention to anyone about Airbnb. Please take good care of the furniture. Thank you. So I told Airbnb about that. Like, that is not okay. She is illegally renting out her Airbnb. That is why she has locks on the ground with all these other Airbnb locks because they can't have them on their physical doors. Because if your apartment building allows you to sublease and do Airbnb, you can have the lock on your door. You don't have to have it up the street around the corner over at grandmother's house we go, okay? So these were red flags that I made Airbnb aware about. Um, and I took the video. I want y'all to listen to the video really quick. There's a bunch of lock boxes outside and you're supposed to, I guess, pick that one and put in the code. I've tried for several minutes. This is just, I'm not staying here. This is crazy. I've never seen nothing like this. There's no parking. This cannot be legal. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So this is what I posted to Airbnb. I said, at Airbnb, the fact that you're allowing people to run illegal Airbnbs in Los Angeles with no safety concern for your paying clients is disgusting. You and your company should be ashamed. So if someone gets robbed or hurt fooling with Grace's illegal listing, it's no big deal, huh? So that is what I posted. And I mean, we had a big discussion on the page. You know, people were shocked. But then you had, you know, there's comments that y'all don't see of people, you know, and I just block those people. I don't have time. Oh, you're, you know, you're blasting this woman. She's just trying to make money. Oh, you're, you know, you're doing too much. It's not that serious. You're being dramatic, T. Oh, you're a diva. Again, I am somebody who has used Airbnb since 2015. Y'all have never seen me make a post like this. I literally Airb I literally Airbnb'd a mansion in Atlanta not even a few weeks ago for my event. So I use Airbnb. Like this is not, you know, y'all know I don't take to social media to complain about stuff, especially things I can handle behind closed doors. But I felt like I had to let my audience know what was going on, especially in LA. And so after me blasting them, because they were saying that they couldn't refund me and all this other stuff, they got real spicy with me on the phone. I said, well, I'm not arguing back and forth with y'all. That's one thing I don't do. I'm not arguing back and forth. I'm not wasting my energy. I'll be calling Chase, my credit card company, and I'll be filing a dispute and I'll get my money back that way. So it made me no difference. Um, but I think once I blasted them and they saw the comments and what people were saying, 
Then they hit me up literally the next morning was like, oh, hello. Thank you for your continued patience while we work on your request. I already checked our possible options and we have that we have on this matter. That being said, a full refund of one thousand three hundred seventy six dollars and eleven cents has been processed to your card and it will be posted to your account for up to 15 business days, depending on your bank's processing time. So they finally decided to refund me my money. So I let everybody know that, you know what I'm saying, that I was refunded. But I just thought it was very interesting how some people were upset that I listened to my gut instinct and they were even trying to shame me and saying I was doing too much. Well, now what's very interesting, this was on June 26, 27th that I went through this. Fast forward two and a half weeks later, there's a beautiful Olympian. Her name is Kim Glass. And she was assaulted by a homeless man in where? Downtown L.A. She was meeting with a friend and this homeless guy was kind of, you know, lingering around and they were having a really uneasy feeling about him. And this man busted her in her beautiful face with a metal pipe. I mean, this situation was just heartbreaking. I was literally crying when I seen this because this very easily could have been me. And this was what I was feeling when I was like, T, you got to get up out of here. Something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? And for this to happen to her two weeks after my situation and what I was feeling, it was heartbreaking. So I want you guys to watch these video clips of Kim. Um, she's done a few media blitz. She also talked about it on her Snapchat, what happened to her. So I want y'all to check this out. All right, guys, I'm doing this video because I have a lot of messages coming in and I don't want to have to repeat myself and I appreciate all the love um, and I'm sure it's just going to get out and around. So I might as well um, let you guys know what happened. Um, yesterday I was in downtown L.A. and I had a lunch. As I was leaving lunch, I was outside and I was saying goodbye to a friend and I um, this homeless man ran up. Um, he had something in his hand on, he was the other side of the car in the street. And he just like looked at me with some pretty hateful eyes. And um, as I turned to go tell my friend, I think something's like wrong with him and I think he's gonna hit the car. Before I knew it, a big metal bolt, like pipe, hit me in my, hit me. Right here, here, I just, it happened so fast. He literally flung it from the street. So he was not even close to me at all. Um, kind of took me down and out and they got him and they held him down until the cops came. Um, ambulance came. You know, right now it looks like my vision will be okay. And um, I got really great stitching from a doctor. I have just amazing friends and family around me and supporting me. And that's been the best part. I do have um, multiple fractures up here and a small one here, but my friends have been family, amazing. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know what happened because I know it was going to get out and, and I'm getting a lot of messages and I love you guys so much and just know that I'm okay and I hope you guys have an awesome weekend and uh, <laughs> shout out to these eyelashes that have been on ever since. I don't know who made these, but can I get a deal? Because you guys are awesome. Also, like, guys, just be safe out there because you keep your head in a swivel off your phones. I mean, mine wasn't, but it still, I wasn't ready for it. And um, there's a lot of mentally ill people on these streets right now. And it shouldn't have to be fearful when you walk, but it's true. And so, you guys, just be safe. Sorry. <laughs> Exclusive Olympian Kim Glass in tears as she tells Inside Edition new details about her horrific attack by a homeless man that left her face bruised and battered. I have a stitch here or two and then I have um, multiple fractures in my orbital bone here um, and then a micro fracture down here. She breaks down thinking about how the attack could have been even worse. I could have fell and hit my head and there could have been some brain hemorrhaging. New footage shows the blood splattered sidewalk and an injured Kim right after the senseless assault. Passerbys are trying to stop the bleeding. 
Her alleged attacker is pinned to the ground. Kim had just had lunch in downtown L.A. when she says the homeless man clobbered her with a metal pipe for no reason. He scurried up like this and he like looked at me like this and it was just like, it was like rage in his eyes. Then wham. All of a sudden I just go bam and I'm just like, and I'm like, oh snap. And I just fell straight down to the ground. Kim won a silver medal playing volleyball at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. She often posts motivational and workout videos on Instagram. The six foot three Wonder Woman never imagined she'd be in the spotlight as a crime victim. Kim says she's grateful to the strangers who stopped to help. Good Samaritan Benson Parks pinned down the homeless man charged in the unprovoked assault. Inside Edition brought Kim and the total stranger together. I heard her screaming. I jump out. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, I get instantly mad. It's beautiful, honestly. Yeah, honestly. It's just beautiful because it's just like you didn't have to stop. And it just warms me up just to know that like there are people out there that don't turn a blind eye. I was sitting in my uh, truck eating lunch and I heard a woman screaming. So I, you know, get out of my truck and someone says, you know, this guy attacked her. And I'm like, what guy? And so they point to the guy. He's getting up, away across the street and I see blood everywhere. Just she's just dripping blood. So that was Benson Parks. That was the man who chased down the attacker, speaking to Bill earlier this week, who nearly blinded our next guest, the attacker. She was walking in downtown Los Angeles when the suspect allegedly hit her in the face with a metal pole. He is identified as a homeless man with previous convictions for felony assaults. He was out on parole at the time of that attack. Joining us now is the Olympic silver medalist herself, Kim Glass. Kim, welcome. Mm. How are you feeling? Hi, how are you? Man, I'm healing. I'm healing. My emotions change every day. Mm. A little, you know, you, like I'm, I'm always really grateful and happy that this didn't turn out as bad as it could have been. But, you know, like, you know, I'll be in the car with someone and someone will come up towards the car. I like freak out sometimes. So every day is a little bit different. I'm still processing this. Yeah, all. Kim, we just want to remind viewers this was in downtown Los Angeles. Daylight. Right. And, and out yeah. of nowhere, you get yes. socked by a 10 inch bolt. And I, I just have to think when, when, yeah. when you think back on that, it has to, there has to be some, something in your mind that's saying, how in the, why in the world did that happen? And when you ask yourself that, how do you answer it? You know, I sat with it. I was thinking about it in the ambulance as I was talking to my mom on FaceTime. And I was like, Mom, I don't know why this happened to me, and and I was like, I, I there's nothing I could have done to prevent it, you know. Like I think sometimes we get really, we feel like kind of immune when we're walking in the daytime, right? Regardless, and I think about what I could have done, and I don't. For me, I, I feel like I'm always alert, and I, there's nothing I could have done to prevent this. Oh, yeah. You know, I know everyone's out there offering me self-defense classes, and how'd you let him get close to you? I'm like, he wasn't close, and I could have never predicted this happening. And as I've been home and thinking about this, I said, God, you chose me for a reason, you know? And the reason is, one, you know, I'm hard-headed, so you knew I was gonna make it. <laughs> and I think, uh, and you know that I still have work to do here. And, um, but also because he had other attackers and there's been other victims around Los Angeles and it keeps on happening. And, and everyone's paying attention to me because I'm an Olympian, right? But these other attackers haven't been, um, the other victims haven't been vindicated, mm -hmm. right? Every time someone's being let out on the street again and again, they're doing a disservice and they're pretty much saying that these victims' traumas were in vain. And now, like, I'm here to, I'm hoping that this doesn't happen to anyone else again. And it's however a, I can help, yeah. I think that's what it, it's, it's a strong message. For. Because of that, you're calling for change. What do you think could help crack down on attacks like this from happening? Um, well, when I look at it, it's like, you know, I think that we all deserve the opportunities of freedom, you know, but not if you're a terror to society. And this is, this history has repeated itself with this, right? 
He was let out on probation and he attacked someone else and that was a misdemeanor, right? But before that, he had already assault and battery two other people and they were all women, mm -hmm. right? And so what does it take, you know? Like we just keep dropping the ball and we keep dropping the ball. You know, I look at it like this, like, I'm, an, I'm a professional, I was a professional athlete, right? Mm -hmm. I've been a part of teams all my life, right? And if I keep doing something wrong the entire time, I have to change something because it's not working for the team, mm. you know? And if I'm not changing something, then I get taken out and someone else replaces me. And at this point, what's the answer, yeah. you know? Because something, everything that we're doing right now is not working, yeah. well, and there of, needs to Kim, be a change, a, a lot and of that's that evident. A lot of that answer, frankly, um, comes from people like you when you go public. I mean, we're, we're, we're looking at you. We know what you look like in the hours after. You look terrific, by the way, uh, before <laughs> and, and after. Thank you. But when you go public and tell people, hey, Thanks. man, we can't live like this. Let's get our house in order so that people like me don't have to suffer because of the decisions of other people that they're making for us. That, right. That's your purpose now. I know, man. And I just, I just hope that God leads me and is like, gives me the right words or just leads me in the direction that's where everyone's highest good. Mm. Sorry. We wish you Because, you know, we're, 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 I, I didn't expect all this. Hugs through the TV <laughs> camera to you. Kim, we're praying for you. <laughs> Thanks. Hang tough. You have more <laughs> people you behind you than you have, have any idea. So many people support you. I feel it, you guys. It's crazy. And I think that this is what we stand for, right? As b all the bad that's happened, I tell you, and how divided our country is. But I tell you, like, when you see everyone come together, how everyone's rallied around me, this is what America is supposed to be about, and this is what we stand for. And we got to do this together, you know? Amen Sorry. to that. Yeah. We're learning more tonight about the man arrested for attacking former Olympian Kim Glass in downtown. We first brought you her heart-wrenching interview earlier this week. Now tonight, another victim has come forward describing her attack and her fears that this man would strike again. She spoke with our Joy Benedict, something you will only see right here on KCAL 9. He just came up behind me and he socked me. A painful moment and a painful memory for this woman who was randomly attacked in downtown LA. I felt like a car bike had hit me and I started stumbling forward and I was just crying. Irene Lee remembers it very clearly in August of 2020. She was an attorney at the DA's office when she walked to this Starbucks with a coworker but didn't make it. I'm screaming out crying, Cindy's calling for help and a security guard pepper sprayed my attacker. This is a photo of the bruise on her back and another of her attacker wearing a backpack as they waited for police. It is the same man you see here, Simeon Tasfamarian, the homeless person arrested last week for viciously attacking former Olympian Kim Glass, throwing a construction bolt at her head. Him or other people like that are gonna hurt more people, you know? And uh, he's been let out enough now. In an emotional interview, Glass demanded change after learning that her attacker had a pattern of offenses. Something has to change because what we're doing now is not okay. This man has been let out multiple times. He has done this to other people. According to court records, Tasfa Marion assaulted at least four other women. Two women in 2018 were chased with a golf club and a hammer. In January of 2020, records show he pleaded guilty to striking a 19-year-old with a metal pole. He was given probation and then attacked Lee. Obviously, it was very alarming to me that I was the fourth woman that's documented that he had attacked. Tasfa Marion went to jail for the crime and violating his parole, but with time served, he got out in January. As a victim at that time when I had spoken at the sentencing, I felt like I wasn't being heard. You know, the judge was fully aware of his entire history, even more privy to it than I am. And um, the writing was on the wall. And of course, six months later, yet another offense, this time on Kim Glass. Lee wants to make it clear that this is not a small crime and the system needs to start paying attention to patterns. So repeat offenders like her attacker aren't able to hurt anyone else. By the grace of God, Kim is alive and healing, but I just can't imagine if he bashed her head in and she died and it would just be another murder in downtown LA. And I, 
I feel like this was entirely preventable. The suspect is being held without bail right now pending a psychological evaluation. All right, so you guys just saw those videos of Kim Glass. I mean, the whole situation is sad, and this woman is gorgeous. She's tall, she's beautiful, she's a volleyball player, she's won an Olympic medal, and she was attacked for no reason by some random homeless man. And thank God for that black guy who ran and caught him and threw him on the ground and got him arrested, you know, instead of just standing there. You know, thank goodness that he, he, he literally ran to go protect this black woman. You know, but the narrative on social media is that black men hate black women. They don't protect them. But that was a real black man right there who stood up for this black woman and ran to go, you know, capture this man who just assaulted her. And thank God he did. You know what I'm saying? Thank God God placed that man there as an angel to go grab that man so he couldn't hurt the next person. So... I've been wanting to talk about this situation for the past few days, but like I said, I've been drained from doing my deep dive, so I wasn't able to talk about it. So I was going to do the podcast about this on Friday, and then on Saturday, I get news again that another person was attacked by a homeless person. Where? In L.A. But unfortunately, this time, race car driver Bobby East, he was killed. He was simply getting gas at the gas station like we all do, filling up, and some crazy homeless man came up to him and stabbed him. Y'all check this news clip out. New details just coming in on the murder of a one-time NASCAR star. Authorities say Bobby East was killed this week at a gas station in California as he was trying to fill his tank. And what we've now learned about the suspect. Here's ABC's Zareen Shaw. Tonight, authorities investigating a shocking crime at a California gas station. A former NASCAR star stabbed to death. Authorities say Bobby East was filling up his tank Wednesday in Westminster near Huntington Beach when suddenly he was attacked. In a statement, police say they tried to save East's life at the gas station until paramedics rushed him to a trauma center where he died. The stabbing setting up a manhunt. Police tracking down the suspect Friday, their search warrant resulting in an officer-involved shooting, wounding their canine unit dog. Officers arresting Trent Millsap. According to reports, the 27-year-old was homeless. The 37-year-old East, a Torrance native, had been living in Indiana and was a three-time U.S. Auto Club champion and the son of Hall of Fame car builder Bob East. This coming just days after another attack of an athlete by a homeless man. Former Olympic volleyball player Kim Glass claiming she was brutally beaten by a homeless man in Los Angeles. That suspect arrested. And with minutes ago, we learned that suspect who allegedly attacked that NASCAR driver died in that police involved shooting. Wit. Zareen Chow with those late details. Thank you. All right. So you guys just saw that news clip. This whole situation just really disturbed my spirit yesterday when I found out about this second attack. The man who attacked Bobby East, his name was Trent William Millsap, and he was also later on killed by the police. Um, it just goes to show you that listening to your discernment and strengthening your discernment can literally be a life and death situation. When the Kimberly Glass situation happened, this is what I wrote on Instagram. I'm going to read this to you guys. I said, this is so damn sad. Now, do some of y'all understand why the fuck I left the Airbnb that had locks sitting outside in front of homeless people and drug addicts? There's a lot of mental illness in L.A. When I saw all them men watching me mess with that lock, I said, fuck it and grabbed my stuff and left. These men would have had no problem busting me in the back of my head. I do not trust many of the homeless population in L.A. Many tend to be schizophrenic and they will chase you and attack you at any given point in time. Anyone who has lived in L.A. can attest to this. It's scary prayers to Kim Glass. And I had a lot of people reply and say, no, T, we believed you then, you know, and you're so right. The same thing is going on in New York City. Um, we've had situations where people were walking and they've been they've had feces thrown at them. In downtown L.A. It's it's gotten that bad. The homelessness, the schizophrenia, you know. So I, I, I'm doing this to let you guys know that there is nothing wrong with listening to your spiritual discernment, a.k.a. your gut instinct. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go.
Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.